Hi. Hello. on these all of a sudden. Great. The whey I put on them. Yeah, Rose has been feeding our tomatoes with whey. And, um, the, courgettes. and the courgettes. Um why is that? Whey. 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 Ah, uh, I can't think of a whey joke. I know, you always can. No way. Well, uh, the whey contains a number of kind of essential nutrients, but also the courgettes, we've been getting a bit of end rot and a little bit of reading up that we've done on that um, implies, well, theoretically, it's potentially to do with a decrease in calcium. Yeah, so we've been getting a lot of end rot on the um, new variety of courgette that we've been doing this year. And they're a lovely round yellow variety and there's loads of fruits on the um, plants, but yeah, a few of them have been getting this rot and we see that more with yellow ones for some reason, not sure why. Um, but from the little bit of reading up or googling we've done on it and um, there's lots of theories as always but one of them seemed to be that potentially because of the amount of overcast days we've had mm -hmm. that the um, plants themselves might have a bit less calcium in them to be honest I need to do more reading up on that but so I know that you can dilute the whey from cheese making the sweet whey um, rather than acid whey um, two, two types um, Oh, I won't go into that anyway. So you can, I know that you can dilute the whey from cheese making and um, feed that to your plants as a kind of general fertilizer anyway. But I know that it's got a large amount of calcium in it. And again, I read up a bit on that, um, you know, as a calcium feed for your plants. And it says that it's in the perfect form as the whey in terms of the um, availability of it um, for the plants. So basically just came out and fed the whey to the plants instead of to the hens like I normally do. So they missed out a little bit. But um, So yeah, I did it for the whole of this bed that are quite large, but the new ones we've planted, I just did half the bed. Actually just because I ran out, but I thought it'd be like a bit of a science experiment to see if, well, they're really small. So I want to see if they grow any bigger than the ones at the other end, but I don't know. That's a good enough experiment. Oh, hey. One thing you got to watch out for with polytunnels is that it really doesn't get too hot in there. Um, it's, you know, on an obviously hot day, the first thing I do is come and open the doors and the vents. But what you've got to really watch out for are these overcast days in summer where it is quite cold and then suddenly the sun comes out and you've got to run out and open up the vents and the doors uh, before things start wilting in there. I think we caught that one in time. Yeah, we did. Um, Weeding. We do need to do some weeding, but um, <laughs> should we go and have a look at the collie plots? Great, so we just pulled back that tarp on this next uh, cauliflower bed and um, the soil is nice and dry even though we've had all this terrible rain over these weeks the soil has been covered with the black silage sheets so it's dry which is very beneficial for us because it means that we can use machinery on the soil without being too negative to the soil. If the soil was wet um, we wouldn't want to work on it so much with a, a tiller of any sort so it's nice and dry, so I'm gonna go and get the BCS and tiller and just reshape the beds. That's the main reason we're doing this for. It's 
The smell of these Rosa Rugosa behind me is incredible. Apart from planting these just for the love of the roses, we've been collecting them recently and drying them for making them into uh, all sorts of tinctures and potions for Rosa. <laughs> um, but the other reason that we have them here is that they make great hedging. And so this is a little hedge behind me made up of rose, sea buckthorn, and a mixture of crab apple and damson. So this sort of three species thick hedge really helps break the westerly wind that can come through here. So it gives the vegetable plots and the fruit trees that we've planted behind it a lot more protection. And it's certainly very beautiful to walk past and to smell as we uh, do our work. Alright folks, I think we're going to call it a day. It's pretty wet, we're absolutely soaked through. Um, it's been so warm today, it's unreal. Strange, strange weather that we're getting at the moment. Um, but it's actually quite nice to be out in the rain, very, very hot. So, um, yeah, I couldn't film anything because it's been such torrential rain. But we got the collies in the ground, covered with um, EnviroMesh to protect from the cabbage root fly and I got the BCS two-wheel tractor out with the, our um, scythe bar attachment got all the pathways cut around the market garden and all our kind of main walkways so a good bit of work and um, we're gonna go and get changed now I think I'll carry on filming tomorrow or the next couple of days because we didn't get much uh, down on today's vlog for you guys to see so we'll catch you tomorrow <laughs>